Happy New Day Seekers. I'm Barbara De Engel, and I'm here to help you decode your life and get the message that life is bringing you. Astrologically, things are going to be rather tense for the next few months, and I want to share some techniques with you that will help you deal with the challenges more effectively. Now, I'm going to pick your tarot cards for your midweek reset. And once I've finished reading the cards for each and every star sign, I'm going to share a meditation with you that I've taught to hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. It's a short meditation, but it's designed to help you deal with angry feelings. I guarantee you'll feel so much better once you've listened to this meditation. Right, now we're going to draw tarot cards for Aries. As the first zodiac sign Aries, your first card, your tarot advisor, is the King of Cups reversed. Now, the King of Cups is just emotion and his emotional mastery. Unfortunately, when he comes up reversed, it suggests that your feelings are likely to be either mushy, confusing, angry, or maybe even just cold. You might find yourself in a position where you've just about had enough with somebody or something, and you decide that you're going to turn your emotions off. While this may work uh, to a degree, the warning card at the bottom of the pack suggests that if you do withdraw and you cut your emotions off, it's going to have a damaging effect on all your personal relationships. Whatever you need to say will come out wrong. And you should know that while you want to always speak and act with passion, when the emotions get out of control, it can make you downright nasty. And I'm sure that's not the picture you want to give other people. So be sure to take charge of your emotions, Aries, and don't let yourself get too negative about anything. Remember, there's always a positive. The current astrological aspects are quite challenging and Aries people are going to be strongly affected by it because we have the planet Mars in Aries and it's square to the planet Mercury which is in Cancer. So Aries, this is why I'm speaking to you. Your emotions must be channeled because otherwise it could make you sarcastic, hasty and impulsive. Now, how does this energy affect everybody? Well, we have the Sun and Mercury moving through the sign of Cancer, which is a very personal sign. So you'll be, every one of us will be feeling very personal and possessive about something, whether it's an idea, a thought, an opinion, or a feeling. And challenged by this angry and short-sighted and uh, overdrive energy planet of Mars, you can understand things could get a little bit messy, a little bit hot, a little bit teary, and a little bit ugly if it's not dealt with properly. So now I'm going to shuffle the cards for Taurus. And Taurus, your advice card from the tarot is the Six of Wands reverse. Now, the Six of Wands is the card that suggests that whatever you do, you may find yourself feeling that you're just not getting where you want it to be. No matter how hard you push, you just one step behind the people that seem to be doing so much better than you. And this could affect your sense of confidence quite dramatically. Your warning card from the bottom of the pack is the Seven of Pentacles. And this card suggests that if you do feel that you're just not getting there, take a good look at how you've been going about what you want to achieve. Sometimes you either work too hard and push too much, or other times you don't take the initiative and do the things that need to be done and so other people get the opportunity that you've been aiming for. So I hope this helps you to just reset your focus for the rest of the week. Gemini, your tarot card advice for the week, particularly during this challenging time of angry thoughts and sometimes misplaced action, your first card is the Nine of Cups. Now, Gemini, the Nine of Cups is a card that says you may not really care too much about how you come across to other people. As long as you've said your say, doesn't matter how they handle it, you'll be feeling quite okay with yourself. And this card says you cannot afford 
to let yourself become arrogant and complacent because, let's see what the warning card says. Ooh, the death card reversed. As a warning, death says there needs to be some kind of change because if there's no change, you're going to find that things stay the same and they get quite boring and you know that whenever things are boring, it gets very uh, frustrating for you. So be very careful that you don't actively contribute to causing a great deal of disharmony and misconception in your environment. Otherwise, the death card reverse says, it's time for you to try something different. Don't keep on doing the same old things the same old way. It's not going to work for you. So hopefully that helps keep you reset along more positive lines for this week. Cancer, I'm shuffling the cards for you. And of course, while the sun is in your sign and Mercury, you're going to be extra sensitive, extra caring, extra nice, and maybe a little bit extra moody because your thoughts and your emotions can run away with you. And being such a sensitive sign, you often tend to pick up things from other people that you maybe don't always know how to handle. And with this aggressive Mars energy in Aries, anybody being a bit too hasty and fiery and impatient with you could send you retreating inside yourself. And that could be rather challenging. So your advice card here is the lovers, and the lovers suggest that there's always a choice to be made. And if you choose to be more proactive, you'll find that there will be rewards. If you choose to retreat, there will also be rewards. But you have to be sure that these are the kind of rewards that you really want. Your warning card is the Nine of Pentacles reversed. And so the, the lovers card with this card suggests that you may get to a point where you're feeling so stuck in your own emotional world that you might actually need to speak to somebody just to give you a little bit of a lifeline to climb out of that sensitive mode. And I'm not saying your feelings are not correct or relevant. It's just you can sometimes get yourself so bogged down by emotions that it becomes very difficult to see the positive energies. So if you feel yourself getting stuck, ask for help, Cancer. The next sign is Leo. So Leo, I'm shuffling the cards for you. Looking at how these uh, planetary aspects affect you. And you may find yourself having to literally work behind the scenes, doing a lot of thinking and creating, uh, planning, organizing. A lot of stuff is going on behind the scenes. And you might get a bit fed up because nobody really notices exactly what you're doing. But there are plenty of opportunities to expand your mind, expand your your sphere of influence or interest. And this is what the temperance card is uh, pointing out here as an advice card. Keep looking for new things, but be very careful that you don't kind of like get yourself onto uh, too much of a, an alternative track when you're busy looking at all the interesting new things that are around. Your advice, your warning card is the devil. Now the devil can be quite a scary card, but he's actually the sign of organization and business-like approach to everything in life. So while there's plenty of things to see and get distracted by, the devil says, make sure you have your priorities. You must decide what you want to achieve, because if you just want to give in to doing things the easy way or losing focus, well, then the devil says you're going to find yourself in it difficult situation that you've actually helped create. So I hope this helps you reset your week earlier so that you can move along in a far more constructive manner. Virgo, the, uh, the tarot cards and the astrological aspects are pointing out the fact that, yes, you know, you're a great warrior. And when you see a whole lot of negative energy around you, can really get you a little bit uptight. And, you know, when you get uptight, your focus changes and it kind of like shrinks down to what's wrong, what you can fix, uh, what isn't working. And be careful if you find yourself sliding into that kind of mode because, you know, it does sometimes happen. And it can happen because you may feel that there's, there's just so much that you can fight, so much that you can uh, stave off, but you might find that you're actually getting quite tired of trying to keep everybody plus yourself on the right track. 
So uh, don't let your defences down, but it's going to probably be quite a bruising few days in the next uh, uh, three to five days for you. So be careful. If you do find yourself getting tired, the warning card here is the Four of Swords. And that suggests that you need to make sure that you step back from the battles, look after yourself, take a break now and then. Otherwise, you could find yourself feeling really low. And when you're low, your immune system takes a nosedive and you really don't want to catch any of the flu bugs that are doing the rounds right now. So I hope that keeps you on track for the rest of the week, Virgo. All right. Now the next sign is Libra. And Libra, for you, you may find yourself seriously troubled by somebody. And it might not be in a negative way. In fact, you may find yourself so attracted to somebody who's passionate and energetic that common sense and good sense just fly right out the window. And you could find yourself feeling extremely attracted to someone that you know is almost likely to be a bit of trouble for you. So... Uh, Learn what you can, but be very careful because the advice card is the moon. And whenever the moon comes up, it suggests that what you see and what's really happening in the person or the situation may not be really true. So it's very important for you to keep your feet on the ground and check things out with as much logic as you possibly can. Your warning card is the Queen of Wands. And uh, whenever the Queen of Wands comes along, she says, be careful because when you charge ahead with passion, you may know where you're going. But if you don't know what the other people around you's agendas are, you could find yourself just charging down the wrong path without having a, a chance to stop it. So hope this helps you reset your energies and your focus in a far more positive way for the rest of the week, Virgo. I mean Libra. <laughs> Scorpio, the way that these astrological energies are working for you suggests that you may be seriously restless. You may feel like you just want to open up your life. You want to do things differently. You want more adventure. And life's not allowing this right now. So you may find yourself getting really frustrated. And um, Mars is one of the planets that plays a very big role in your Scorpio uh, personality. So be prepared. Your temper is going to be very difficult to control. Your fuse may be short. You may find yourself getting impatient and overreacting to many things. So take a deep breath. You need to listen to the meditation because this will certainly help you manage those angry feelings. The seven of swords reversed is your advice card. And the seven of swords, when it's upright, speaks about an opportunity that is missed. And when it, the swords are reversed, it suggests that don't be in a rush because you might actually find an opportunity to do something that you really would like to do if you can control that impatience. So keep that in mind as you move through the next few days. Your warning card is the Six of Cups reversed. And this card suggests that by Looking back at the past, you know, sometimes you can be quite unforgiving. And uh, these cards suggest that if you find yourself looking back at the past and getting angry about the past, you're going to miss an opportunity to move yourself ahead in a positive way. So I hope this helps you reset your focus for the rest of the week, Scorpio. Sagittarius. Your uh, astrological aspects suggest that you'll be seriously fired up and it doesn't take much to fire you up and get you moving. However, you also need to remember that energy without mental focus can cause a lot of problems. So your advice card from the tarot is the Queen of Pentacles and she suggests when she comes up reversed to remember that you can focus so much on the energy side or the practicalities that you kind of like neglect one or the other. So do try and keep a balance between what you would love to be doing and what you need to be doing because these two could be a path that splits open in several different directions and if that does happen that splits in several directions 
And if that does happen, it will be a lot of effort to bring things back together again. Your warning card is the Seven of Cups. And this card almost always ties in with the Sagittarius frame of mind. You have a very open mind, but you might... And that's going to take a lot of sensible thinking in order to keep yourself on track. The next uh, sign for uh, tarot cards is Capricorn. And Capricorn, you are likely to find yourself seriously influenced by the actions and the words and the feelings of people around you. And your energy is really focused in your personal relationships, your very close business relationships, and what's happening in your home. And very often when... Uh, the going gets tough, Capricorn people start resetting their financial focus because this is a card of the, the man who's in charge of everything in his life. So you want to try and take charge, but you also have to remember that you can get quite strict and quite harsh and quite uncaring towards the people around you. So if you do find yourself doing this because you've been feeling stressed, the warning card here, the King of Swords, suggests that it's time for you to remember that when you're not thinking clearly, you can be quite harsh and uncaring towards people around you. And the very people that you should be relying on and asking for support and supporting in your turn, uh, you could end up making an enemy that could make things rather difficult for you. So reset your focus and remember that you're in this as a part of a team, not just as the leader or the only person around who's doing anything. All right, Capricorn, keep yourself on track now. Aquarius, the astrological aspects for you are suggesting that uh, it's time to pay very, very strict attention to your finances because you could be in a mood where you impulsively decide to spend money on something without thinking about the consequences. And the consequences could be quite uncomfortable. So be very careful. The Ace of Wands here as your advice card suggests that this is not a time to expand in any direction. Keep your focus small. Don't waste time or money on anything because this is not a good time for you to start anything. Things may look better next week, but for now, don't rush into anything, please. Your warning card uh, is the Eight of Swords. Now, the Eight of Swords, as you can see, is stuck. So your circumstances for the rest of the week are likely to be limiting, whether it's because of work pressure, because of lack of opportunity or finances, or just because you're so tired of doing the same old things that you all you can see is the same old things. Be Just be aware that things are likely to change in the near future, but for now, this is the reality that you'll be dealing with and do it with the best grace possible. All right, last uh, card is Pisces. Pisces, your, uh, your focus uh, with the astrological aspects here is one that brings out a strong sense of your own intuition. You know, you're, you're a very sensitive person. And when you get these uh, feelings and senses about things, the first thing you usually want to do is just share it with everybody. But the sun reversed as your advice card suggests that whatever you're feeling right now may blow over very quickly. So don't be in a rush to share anything. Just give these feelings and inspirations and intuitions some time to build up before you share them with anybody else. Your warning card is the Four of Wands reversed. And whenever the Four of Wands comes up reversed, it suggests that you might find that your circumstances just feel Oh, you, you feel like you've been here, you've done all of this, you're tired of this, you want to change. But the sun reversed and the four of wands says nothing will change right now. So the people are still going to be the same old people. They're going to be doing the same old things. Your environment's going to look the same. Just hang in there for the rest of the week. Nothing's going to change, but there's plenty that you can do in your situation where you are now. And the biggest thing you can do is to get that attitude correct so that frustration doesn't drive you and the people around you a little crazy.
I hope this helps to reset you and keep you on track for the rest of the week. I want to share a meditation with you. It's something that I've used for many years and I've taught to hundreds and hundreds of students. It's quite simple. You don't need to have learned to meditate before. If you just are willing to close your eyes and follow the instructions, you'll find yourself doing it quite easily. Here are some tips to help you prepare for the meditation. Firstly, remember, it's a very simple meditation and it will help you calm down. Secondly, if you find yourself in a situation that involves anger, there are some things that you can do. If you can, try and excuse yourself from the situation for a few minutes and tell the other parties involved that you're going to return as soon as you've calmed your feelings down so that you can find a solution to the problem. All right? You can't just walk away because that will send the wrong message. If you can't get out of the situation, then the practice that you're getting with this meditation now will help you deal with any angry situation that arises in the future with far more grace and dignity. And that's what you want, right? Remember, the secret to dealing with anger is being in control of your breathing and then your thoughts, not the other way around. You can't stop thinking angry thoughts they're going to be there, and as you start this meditation, the angry thoughts are going to be there in your mind. Just let them be. You're going to just focus on your breathing. This meditation is all about breathing. You need three things in order to do this meditation. Three. The first one is you need to be somewhere quiet and safe. I've done this meditation in my car, even in the bathroom at work, in a corporate situation, at least that's some place you can go and be uninterrupted for a few minutes. Second thing, you need to be able to listen to my voice without any distractions. So if you have headphones, put them on or put them into your ears and at least then you won't have to worry about holding on to your phone and still trying to listen to my voice as well. Although it can be done in an emergency. Many of my students have done this before. Be aware that as you do this meditation, in the beginning, your angry thoughts are going to be going all over your place like bubbles coming out when you boil a pot of water. Just let them be. Your thoughts will be thinking themselves. You are just going to be focusing on your breathing. As you follow the meditation, you may find some pictures arising in your mind. Or you may not have any pictures in your mind at all. It really doesn't matter. As long as you just follow the meditation, listen to what I'm instructing you to do, and do that, you'll soon feel some relief. So let the angry thoughts bubble up in your mind. You'll deal with them later. Right now in the meditation, you're going to breathe. Just breathe. You're going to breathe, nothing else. If angry thoughts arise, just let them be. You'll deal with them later. So while you focus on your breathing and the thoughts arise, just gently imagine that you're pushing them away, just very gently, almost like you would push plastic balls in a bath of water away. Just gently push them away and you're just going to focus on your breathing. And I'm pointing to my nose because that's very, very important. In fact, you can do this too. If you struggle to focus on your breathing, touch the tip of your nose and follow the meditation. You don't have to keep your finger on your nose for the entire meditation, but it does help you to focus on your breathing. You can pause the video now to ensure that you are seated somewhere safe and private. Are you ready? Good. Now, close your eyes. Just breathe. Even if your thoughts are going crazy, remind yourself through the thoughts that you're breathing. Finger on the tip of your nose and become aware of the breath as it enters your nose. 
You know when you're stressed, you're not breathing properly, so focus on the tip of your nose. Feel the air moving into your head, down into your lungs, filling your lungs, and then become aware of you exhaling the air again and feel the air coming out the tip of your nose again. That's it. Take a deep breath in. Try and breathe in as slowly as possible. Breathe in and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And another deep breath in and out. If you find it difficult to concentrate on your breathing, keep your eyes open and watch the bubbles in the background of the screen. They symbolize the angry thoughts rising up and just moving away. If you can just allow your thoughts to rise up like that and you just focus on your breathing because that right now is the only thing that you have any power over. Focusing on your breathing and deliberately thinking about breathing. It's actually quite easy once you get the hang of it. Just close your eyes and focus on your breathing. You're very aware of the air moving into your lungs, the sensation that you find at the tip of your nose as you inhale and exhale. Just concentrate on breathing slowly and calmly and smoothly. Breathing in and breathing out. Take a deep breath in and out. And another deep breath in and out. Keep pushing the angry thoughts away. You know they're there, but just push them away gently. They'll still be there when you need to think about them more calmly. But just push them away and stay focused on your breathing. As you gently push all these thoughts aside, you know that you have the power to control your breathing. Become aware that you're standing in a big bubble of light. Might not be easy. Just think, I'm standing in a bubble of light because in this light, this is where you're safe and protected and this anger can be carefully and constructively dissipated. So while you're standing in this bubble of light, as you inhale, imagine that you're breathing in light and breathe it out again into the bubble. Breathe in light, feel it filling every part of your body, every part of your mind, chasing away any dark thoughts. Fill yourself with light and breathe it out into your bubble. Keep on breathing the light in and out for a few minutes. Breathing in and breathing out light filling you up, lighting up all the dark corners, helping you to take charge of your thoughts and your anger. Now you're ready to start breathing out the anger. So breathe in the light and breathe out the anger. Feel it moving out into the bubble around you, just like those little balls of light. And when you breathe out the anger, don't go because you don't want to create a volcano inside your bubble of light. Let your breath out slowly as if you try to breathe out in front of a candle and you don't want to blow the candle flame out. So breathe in the light and breathe out the anger as slowly as possible and gently as possible. Feel the anger 
leaving your body. Feel it leaving your mind. And as it fills this bubble, there's so much light there in your little bubble as you're breathing in the light and breathing it out that the anger begins to dissipate in the bubble of light around you. Slowly breathe in the light and breathe out your anger. And you start to feel a sense of calmness settling down on you. Now focus on breathing lightness and calmness and peace. Breathe it in and breathe out the anger and all the upset feelings. Keep on doing this, breathing in the peace and the light and breathing it out. And you get a sense that as you breathe out this peaceful energy, the anger begins to disappear, just like the morning mist does when the sun comes up in the morning. Become aware that your heart is settling down to a normal beat. Keep your breathing slow. Breathe in and breathe out. Focus on your breath. Focus on the peace that you're beginning to feel. Peacefully put the angry feelings aside, knowing that you'll be able to deal with the issue later when your thoughts are calm and peaceful. Just enjoy the growing sense of peace as your thoughts grow calmer. You know that you'll be able to deal with the situation later and it will be easier as you can think and feel without the anger. Breathe in and out again. Breathing in peace. Feel it settling into every cell of your body and breathe it out. Feel how you are more in control of your thoughts and your emotions. And you know, you actually do have control over your feelings. They don't own you. You are the boss of your thoughts and feelings and your tool for using this is your breath. Remember, there's always a positive. There's always a better way to deal with anything. And you know that by staying focused and calm and aware of your breathing, you will begin to master your own feelings and thoughts and become far more stronger and constructive in the way that you deal with things in life. You always have the power to change the way you think about things and the way you deal with them. Keep breathing in this peace. You can carry it with you wherever you go. If you do, just remind yourself mentally or just gently touch the tip of your nose Stay focused on your breathing. You can handle anything when you're in charge of your breathing. Gradually open your eyes and return your thoughts to your daily life. So practice it regularly. It's the most valuable thing you will ever have in your repertoire of dealing with the challenges of life. Please remember to like, share and subscribe subscribe button is right there and share this with anybody else that you know who may need help in dealing with their anger in a more constructive manner. Together let's spread the message that there's always a positive. Thank you for watching.